Both of you, young ladies, I was talking back and forth with you, and you said, look, you would vote for Nikki Haley. That's someone that you can see yourself voting for. But you said if it gets between Nikki Haley, uh, I'm sorry, Donald Trump, and Joe Biden again, you will vote for who? I will vote for President Biden. I have five grandchildren, four of them are girls, and I'm very concerned about women's issues and democracy. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. Every once in a while, the old coffee shop interview on Fox News reveals that every Republican isn't in lockstep with the destructive nature of MAGA. And when the only approach is anger, hatred, and expulsion if a fellow conservative disobeys his demands, he doesn't realize that he may be losing not only moderates, but some Republicans. What I'm worried about is his ability to win over Haley voters once this thing is over. You know, when he says anyone who makes a contribution to bird brain will be permanently banned from MAGA, you know, does that apply to Haley voters, too? <laughs> you know, it shows that he hasn't learned any lessons from why he lost in 2020. He lost in 2020 because he lost 43,000 swing voters in three states. And 40, about 43,000 swing voters will decide this election next November. He's got to win them over. They're not MAGA. <laughs> they are either Democrats or, or center-right uh, Republicans uh, who are not, not, not big fans of his. He's got to win them over and expand his base, not shrink his base. You don't ban people from MAGA if you want to become president of the United States again. Since Nikki Haley's up for banishment now, her decision to finally attack him after previously telling voters that he's the greatest ever appears to be getting under his skin. It makes people wonder what took her so long and which version of Haley is the one running for the nomination this time? Let's look at the last 48 hours, Dana. I mean, first of all, you had um, election night. Trump gets on stage. He throws an absolute temper tantrum talking about revenge, but he says nothing about the American people, nothing about what he's going to do about the wasteful spending that he um, encouraged and allowed the Republicans and Democrats to do in his term. He said nothing about how he's going to secure the border and what he's going to do different that he didn't do when he was president before. He said nothing about how he's going to prevent war. Then he goes and says that he's going to ban anyone from MAGA that donates to me. Think about that. That's a president who's supposed to serve every person in America, and you're deciding that you're going to have a club and actually ban people from being in and out of your club. And then he goes and encourages the members of the RNC and tries to push them into saying that he's the nominee in the race. I mean, they got so much pushback that he had to backtrack well, from did, it. I, I mean, he's sure totally he unhinged. But at the end of the day, our focus is still on the American people. Temper tantrums, revenge, an unhinged guy that says nothing about the American people. Haley's finally taken the layups that she's been passing on in order to now capitalize on the voters that are currently disgusted with Trump but are way too paralyzed to break from his grip on their brains. And Fox's Bill Hemmer didn't take those insults very lightly at all. Maybe because he's worried that Haley's improbable path to win will end in failure for the nomination, but success in convincing people that he's completely unfit to be president again. You went on to say there a moment, Doug, that he was totally unhinged. I, I think that was the, the quote you gave. Um, I, coming out of New Hampshire, he won 74 percent of Republicans. Uh, to date, 109 counties have voted and you've won two, and one of those by a single vote. Well, when do you start winning Republicans? <laughs> Well, first of all, I will win Republicans, but guess who else I win? I win moderates and I win independents, which he does not. That is why he lost in 2018. That's why he lost in 2020. That's why he lost in 2022. And that's why in every poll you see, he loses to Joe Biden and I win. This is the issue of you can't win a presidential election without moderates and independents. I can get the support of Republicans, moderates, and independents. I will do that. Bill Hemmer really, really didn't want to let it go. Oh. Just with the schedule coming up, you're not really competing in Nevada, and they got Michigan, Idaho, and uh, North Dakota. Uh, there are 16 states that vote on March 5th, that's Super Tuesday. Which of those 16 will you win? We're going to try and push for all of them. We're going to do everything and anything we can. But right now, our focus is on South Carolina. We've always taken it one state at a time. We're going to keep doing that. But look, Americans are coming on board with us. Everything that he does to talk about himself makes everybody realize we've got to be talking about America. We've got kids who only 31 percent of eighth graders in our country are proficient in reading. We've got a border that's absolutely out of control. We've got wars around the world, and we've got to prevent our men and women that are in harm's way from getting hurt. There's some serious issues. The last thing we need to talk about is how disgruntled he is or how vengeful he is. We've got to start talking about solutions and how we're going to get America back on track. Okay, I didn't hear a specific state mention, but uh, we'll leave that to the side now.